some of the health benefits associated with sauna are better cardiovascular health. It aids in re reducing the risk of congestive heart failure, if I understand that correct, hypertension, inflammation, also is a cellular repair mechanism, I think as well. So those are just some of the health benefits not getting into the mental health and cognition benefits. Did I miss any of the major ones? Well, let, yeah, let's dive a little more into the cardiovascular because it's a little more nuanced than that. So sauna in many respects, heat stress, hot tub, hot bath, sauna, the physiological response to heat is happening. The same thing that's happening with exercise. So the physiological response is very similar. Your heart rate elevates to about 120 beats per minute. That's indicative of about moderate intensity aerobic exercise. You, your blood flow is increased to the skin to fill, facilitate sweating. So you start to sweat and help you cool down. These things all happen when you're in a sauna or hot bath or hot tub and, or when you're doing phys moderate physical aerobic exercise. In fact, there's been a head-to-head -head comparison. The sauna, 20 minutes in a sauna, a hot sauna, mimics 20 minutes on a stationary bike intensity aerobic exercise. So this is, I think about a hundred or so Watts basically on a stationary bike. So the same effects are occurring. So basically while you're doing the sauna, while you are exercising on the stationary bike, your heart rate elevates, your blood pressure goes up during that activity. However, when you are completed with the sauna or the exercise bike, blood pressure goes down It improves. It goes down even below what your baseline is. This has been a head-to-head -head comparison, the sauna. And this is one of the most, I would say, profound effects of the sauna. So there's been epidemiological studies. These are observational studies looking at correlations. And people that use the sauna four to seven times a week have a 46% reduced risk of hypertension. But there's also been intervention studies. So people that are into the sauna for 30 minutes and blood pressure is then measured, blood pressure is improved. Both systolic and diastolic blood pressure is improved after the sauna. There's a pretty profound effect on blood pressure, which is not only important for cardiovascular health, it's extremely important for brain aging and brain health. In fact, it's one of the most important lifestyle factors for preventing dementia. And about 50% of people in the United States have hypertension but 20% of young adults. So these are people that are age 18 to 39, 20% of those young adults have hypertension. That's where it's the most dangerous. And those are the people that probably don't care as much. They're like, I'm young, whatever. Well, it's the cumulative exposure to high blood pressure. That's damaging blood vessels at the blood brain barrier. That's that thing we talked about at the beginning of this podcast that starts to basically, it's like the early signal of blood brain barrier breakdown when you're, when you're basically damaging those blood vessels. So blood pressure is extremely important early on. And so that is one of the things that both exercise and sauna have in common. They very robustly improve blood pressure. You mentioned congestive heart failure. Well, the sauna use, there's been studies out of Finland from Dr. Yari Laukinen's lab. Dr. Yari Laukinen has done a lot of these observational studies looking at the sauna, and he has found that sudden cardiac death is 22% lower in men that use the sauna two to three times a week, 63% lower in men that use the sauna four to seven times a week. This is a typical Finnish sauna, 174 degrees Fahrenheit temperature around 20% humidity. So it actually feels a lot hotter, 10 to 20% humidity actually. And 20 minutes was like the key sweet spot for actually the numbers that I just quoted. In addition to sudden cardiac death will all cause lower cardiovascular related mortality from different types of cardiovascular disease is also affected. So men that use this on two to three times a week have a 27% lower cardiovascular related mortality. If they use this on a four to seven times a week, a 50% lower cardiovascular related mortality. Again, this is what's called a dose dependent effect. It, the more frequent the sauna use, the more robust the effect all cause mortality was also lower. So this is dying from other causes in addition to cardiovascular disease, like respiratory disease, for example. Again, dose dependent effect, 24% lower in people that are use, in using the sauna two to three to times a week, 40% lower people that are using the sauna four to seven times a week. And again, the temperature was typically around 174 degrees Fahrenheit. 20 minute session was the key. Effects were still seen at a lower duration in the sauna, 
but they were not as robust. So for example, the sudden cardiac death, I mentioned four to seven times a week was 50% lower. It had to be at least 19 minutes or greater spent in that 174 degree sauna. So if people were in there for just 11, up to 11 minutes, the reduction in sudden cardiac death was only 11% lower. So the duration in the sauna is also important as well. With epidemiological studies or observational studies, there's always the potential for reverse causality, right? Well, maybe people that are healthier can just stay in the sauna longer. Well, Dr. Yari Laukinen is very aware of these things and they control for many different potential factors, body mass, serum cholesterol, blood pressure, smoking, alcohol consumption, physical activity, socioeconomic status. They control for all these factors. In addition to that, within a cohort of unhealthy people. So these are people that were metabolically unhealthy, had type two diabetes, they had hypertension. They also had a protective effect if they stayed in the sauna as well. And so it's not just a, oh, you have to be healthy to stay in the sauna. Well, the, guess what? Unhealthy people were staying in the sauna for 20 minutes and they experienced a benefit. So I do tend to think the reverse causality arguments a bit lower particularly considering now all the intervention data we have, as I mentioned, the blood pressure intervention, there's sauna studies showing that it lowers blood pressure. There's intervention trials showing that it improves heart rate variability. So this is the ability of your heart to respond to a stressful situation, which you want your heart to be able, your heart to be able to, if there was a heart attack or something like that happening, you want your heart to re respond in a favorable way, right? So, so intervention data is also shown to improve what's called arterial compliance, so this uh, people that spend 30 minutes in the sauna, their arterial compliance was improved. In other words, the ability of their arteries to respond to a, to, con to constrict and contract and vasodilate again, uh, responding to a stressful situation it's, is improved. So that's also from, again, intervention trials, also intervention trials showing that inflammatory biomarkers. So they do go up, but this responds also in the body producing more anti-inflammatory molecules. So for example, IL-10 is also increased after a sauna. Looking at the greater body of evidence, the observational data and the intervention data as well, I think putting them together, we also have mechanistic data from animal studies. I think in general, it all points to the fact that heat stress is a beneficial type of stress on the body. And moreover, it's beneficial in combination with exercise. In other words, I've been talking about how sauna mimics your heat stress mimics moderate cardiovascular exercise. But the reality is there's data showing that actually people have a better, what's called cardiorespiratory fitness, oftentimes measured by a VO2 max. This is the, the ability of your lungs to breathe in oxygen during physical activity and get them to your muscles, performing working muscles. And cardiorespiratory fitness is a biomarker of health. It can predict, again, it can predict healthy aging. It's associated, a, a, a higher cardiorespiratory fitness is associated with a lower all-cause mortality. So people that actually exercise and use the sauna have a higher cardiorespiratory fitness compared to people that exercise only or sauna only. So the two together are better than the anyone alone. And then even on top of that, Dr. Laukinen's come out with some new data looking at intervention studies, people that are exercising or alone, or they exercise and do the sauna. Again, their VO2 max was improved if they did both compared to exercise alone. There was also a variety of lipid markers that were also improved as well if they did both compared to just exercise alone. So I think for people that are already physically active like myself, it is just another reason to go, okay, here's one more thing that actually is this king. So that's clear. But if I still want to do something even more on top of that, adding the heat stress in the form of the sauna, even hot baths, hot baths can increase heat shock proteins. We know sauna increases heat shock proteins. You can sit in a 30 minute, 163 degree Fahrenheit sauna and increase your heat shock proteins 50%. Well, going in a hot bath, we talk about cost effective strategies at the beginning. Not everyone has a home sauna. Not everyone has a gym membership. This isn't Finland where everyone, the saunas are ubiquitous, right? Most people, not everyone, but most people do have a bathtub in their home. And hot bath, 104 degrees, that's a typical typical temperature of a hot tub. So 104 degrees, 20 minutes, 
shoulders down. Okay. It's not easy to do. It's hot. It's hot. You're going to want to cheat, but you can't cheat. So shoulders down will increase heat check proteins by twofold after 20 minutes. So again, heat stress, we talk a lot about sauna. That's where a lot of the science is. Hot baths have also been shown to improve depressive symptoms, increase brain derived neurotrophic factor. This is an important neurotrophic factor in the brain that plays a role in not only brain aging, but also in mental health because it helps the brain respond to changing environments and stressful things. So so being able to adapt to a new environment, it's called neuroplasticity. Brain-derived neurotrophic factor increases neuroplasticity. As we age, our ability to do that decreases. It's why young people can adapt to things so much better than older people can. But depression also has a, a malfunction in the neuro neuroplasticity. And so people that are depressed, often it, the, there's a connection between they're not able to adapt. And that's causes depression when things are changing and you can't adapt to it. It's depressing. Like you're anxious. It's like it causes depression. So hot baths also play a role in that. I know we talked about the saunas helping with depression, but I do think there's also a role for other modalities of heat stress as well. Muscle mass as well. So this is another thing that heat shock proteins affect. This is something that is extremely important with age. And in fact, when we were at the beginning talking about my strategies, some of the low-hanging fruits, things that I'm doing to improve the way I age, I failed to mention that I have increased my protein intake. I have increased my protein. In the RDA protein intake is 0 0.8 grams per kilogram body weight. And that has been shown by a, a variety of experts like Dr. Stuart Phillips, Dr. Brad Schoenfeld. These are they're both experts in physiology. I've had them on my podcast and they've really shown new techniques, radio labeling, labeling techniques that have, that have found that actually 1.2 is more like the minimum requirement for optimal daily protein intake, 1.2 grams per kilogram body weight. And when you're physically active and when you're older, that number may even go up to 1.6. And so protein intake is really important for maintaining muscle mass. It's one of the major signals for muscle growth in addition to strength training, which I also do. I should have mentioned that as well. Strength training and protein intake are very important for maintaining muscle mass, which is extremely important for aging. Frailty is a big thing. You, As you get older and you succumb to some respiratory virus and you go into the hospital, you're going to start losing muscle mass at a rapid rate. And this could be the sort of initiation of the downfall, the trajectory down into mortality. And most of us experienced a family member, a grandparent, perhaps a parent that has experienced that. So it's probably a very a common, we all, we've, we, it's, it makes sense, right? Well, going back to the heat, circling back to the heat, heat shock proteins in particular play a role in preventing muscle atrophy. So the, the basically breakdown of muscle. And this plays a role not only during aging, but also during injury. So there's been some studies that have been done on people where they basically take a limb and inactivate the limb by putting like a cast on it for a period of a week or so, and then expose those people to a local heat where their limb is basically immobilized. And then, or they have a control where they're just at normal room temperature. And it was found that basically exposing this in, inactive, this muscle that is not being worked, right? So there's, it's undergoing atrophy. Uh, it was 38% less likely to undergo atrophy if it was exposed to heat. And there's been a variety of animal studies confirming this, where you put a little animal in a little sauna and they're immobilize a limb. And basically it's like they're over 30% likely to less likely to have muscle atrophy occur. A lot of ongoing interest now in the effects of heat on on basically preventing muscle atrophy, but it is just yet another, I think, benefit to using the sauna or a hot bath or a modality of heat stress, again, to be, help maintain healthy muscle mass. So these are some of the really robust benefits, mental health, cardiovascular health, all cause mortality, also respiratory health. It plays a role in the lungs. VO2 max, healthy aging muscle. It's just an endless list. And it's very, it's to me, it's very apparent that the sauna or heat stress itself through other modalities like the hot baths, hot tubs, jacuzzis should be added to the list of healthy lifestyle habits that people can do to improve their aging process, the way they're aging, their health span, and to improve their disease risk profile.